it's Jeannie from I Dream of Jeannie Design and today I'm going to share with you a tutorial on how to revive a vintage chair. Um, I have this gorgeous chair here and it's in a needlepoint pattern and it has beautiful carvings, rose carvings and really great bones but in the state that it's in it's a little bit dated and it doesn't go with modern decor. I need to add um, just a little more life to it and bring it a little more relevant. So how we're going to start with this is we always start with teardown and teardown is actually a longer process than a lot of people think about. It um, requires a little bit of stamina and a little bit of sweat, sweat work. The tools that you're going to need are a staple or tack puller. Um, it looks like it's in the shape of a screwdriver but at the end it's kind of like a little crowbar with um, a separated end to get underneath staples or nails and it's also magnetic which is great so that you don't lose your nails and staples all over the ground all around you while you're working. And the next thing you need is a pair of pliers. All right, and now we're going to take off the fabric. So I'm gonna use the uh, little pronged edge and I'm gonna just gently get underneath the trim first. And the trim is just the part of the chair that usually covers up where the work of the upholstery is. And I'm gonna pry it gently because you don't wanna damage the wood underneath. And I'm just gonna pry it up. And at this point, if you use your pliers, you can just pull, pull it off, and it simply comes off like that. Now trim is normally put on via glue, so this is the easiest part of the process. And underneath, you'll see how the actual fabric was um, attached. And on this particular chair, it was attached by nails. And so what you're going to do is take the pliers, and you're gonna get it underneath the nail, and you're gonna try to pry it up may take a few times to get underneath one and see it starting to come up. And now I'm gonna take the pliers and I'm gonna grab the fabric and I'm gonna start pulling. This is actually an amazing chair because it's coming apart much easier than many chairs that I've taken apart with staples. Nails are much easier to work with. They come out much easier and you just continue that process of pulling this off and you want to get all of the nails out. If you don't get the nails out, go back after you get the fabric and pull the rest of the nails. So what I'm going to show you is instead of taking the time to show you how to tear down and throughout this whole video is I have another chair. I have a sister chair to this one that I've already finished and I'm going to show you that process. So here we have the sister chairs. And I just wanted to show you the difference between the before chair when we began the teardown process and then this is the chair after the teardown process and I'm going to talk to you about everything that I've done up to this point and show you how to continue it. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So after I completed the teardown process pulling up all of the fabric and any of the extra staples this chair was in fantastic condition which made it very easy for me to show you how to um, reupholster. So after I did the teardown, I actually went ahead and painted this chair and gave it new life. And I love the color and how it turned out. Very simple process. The only thing that I had to do here was um, wipe and clean the wood. And then I used my chalk style paint. And then the color I used was Storm. Um, this, uh, you can buy these eight ounce containers of chalk style paint at both Florida Chic and Chesterfield and Blooming Daisy in Cottleville, Missouri. I used a purdy brush and I honestly only used one coat of paint to get this complete of coverage. Then I gently sanded and put a wax coating finish over it so that we're ready to upholster. You're going to want to finish your painting portion before you start your reupholstery portion. So our chair is painted, sanded, sealed, and ready to go. Um, now the next part of upholstery and the correct part of upholstery is a lot of times you run into where the cushions need to be replaced or um, you have to completely rebuild the seat. And this one you did not. This was actually in fantastic condition. So all I did was make sure that along the edge here, I removed all of the nails and there were a few nails still left because you wanna have a clean workspace when you're stapling your new fabric on. So you just pry underneath that and see how it's magnetic, it holds it. And, um, Next, wrapping a seat. A lot of people maybe um, just reupholster or put their fabric right over the old fabric, um, but when you are doing a seat and you want um, a seat for longevity, 
I always add um, a dacron, which is a wrap, which is an upholstery wrap. It's kind of a little bit like a quilt batting, but it's much thicker, you can see, and much stiffer. And what it does is it just adds a really firm seat and um, gives longevity to the seat because you move a lot out of the seat, um, and this is what you do. So next, the next tool that you need is a staple gun, an upholstery staple gun. And I do have it connected to my air compressor, which makes life much easier. So when I wrap the seat, obviously I cut the piece to, to fit it just right. And I have most of it already completed, but I just wanted to show you how I did the, fit the front. So you're going to kind of pull it taut because you don't want any, you don't want it loose anywhere. I'm going to start in the center up here and okay you can see the edge here this is the trim of the chair that will be showing after it is upholstered and so all of your staples and all of your work needs to be in this section so i'm gonna make sure that my staple gun can feel that edge in there and i'm gonna put it in there now when you upholster it's not just you just keep stapling along you kind of have to go back and forth back and forth so that it's taut and that it's even and now I'm gonna go a bit to this side evenly. And again, my, my nail gun, if you can see, is resting right on top of where that trim is before I staple so that my all of my work is inside of here so that all of this part of the chair is seen. Okay, and after you wrap the chair, of course there's gonna be excess and you always wanna cut that off. Very sharp scissors are important. And you're, one, you're gonna wanna cut that as close as possible because you don't want anything excess hanging out after you, you add your fabric. So we have finished trimming all of the, um, the chair wrap. And I've already cut my pieces to, um, to fit the chair. And the next part is actually kind of really important as well to upholster correctly and for it to look like a really um, good, well, well done piece is you wanna make sure that you always line up your patterns. So sometimes you're gonna have a lot more waste than um, just using a small amount of fabric. You will have a little bit of waste when you do try to line up and center up um, certain patterns on fabric. So with this one, what I wanted to do was make sure that I centered this fleur-de-lis with the center of the chair and make sure that you have enough so that when you staple right here, you're gonna have some to trim out. And I'm just gonna quickly try to fit this on the chair and obviously you see we're gonna have a lot of uh, chairs to go around, some arms to go around, etc. And that's where it gets tricky. And I wanted, for time's sake, to show you a little bit on how I do that. But I'm gonna do a time-lapse video of how I finish the whole project so this doesn't take forever. But when you start here, I always start with this, a center staple, a center one or two. And then I go to the back and I pull it taut and make sure that, that that print is centered as well so that my fabric is in place before I do any cutting or trimming. Now, when you're gonna go around an arm, if you fold your fabric at an angle, you're always going to cut at an angle. You don't wanna cut straight in this direction to try to go around the arm because then you're, it's not going to wrap around correctly and you're gonna do it as a process. You're gonna kinda of do it slowly in small amounts. So I'm cutting at an angle, and I'm gonna see how that fits. That fits, I'm gonna go a little deeper. And that you're gonna keep doing that until it's right so that it's taut and you can pull it on the side and on this side. Okay, so for time's sake, I'm not gonna show you the whole process, but again, talking about lining up the fabric, I do the same for the center of the back of the chair. With this particular piece, I already have this cut, I really wanted to center and focus on these coins. So again, when I staple, I'm going to staple a top and a bottom, pulling nice and taut, then I'm gonna go out to the sides and it's kind of a back and forth process all the way around so that you don't have any pulls in your fabric and your fabric is taut and straight.
are finished with reupholstering the chair and now is the absolute last step. The last step is actually adding the decorative trim. It's also called GIMP. And the whole purpose behind it is to cover your staples and to cover your messy edges. So it's the simplest thing to do. You use a hot glue gun. Glue is how you attach this. So I'm just gonna do a thin line with my hot glue. And just a warning word, hot glue gun is dangerous. I've had many an accident hot gluing the trim on. It does scar. But anyhow, this is how you attach it and now we have a clean edge besides the stringies from the hot glue. We have a clean edge and now I will cut it. The last piece. And Okay. So, now the chair is completely revived. Let's look at what the chair looked like before to what it looks like now. It was a beautiful chair before, but not really relevant to today's decor and in most people's homes. So with chalk paint and reupholstery, you have a whole new look and it's fresh, it's vibrant, it's trendy. And um, now these chair, this chair will be finished soon. Um, these will be for sale. Again, if you would like to leave any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer it. I know this was a very brief video. Um, I didn't want it to be a four hour long video to show you how to do um, to completely from start to finish, but I wanted to kind of break it down so that you kind of get the basics. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed and I do hope to share more with you. So thanks for watching and until next time friends.